guys happy saturday i'm doing all right i'm doing all right okay yeah i had to steal that um but i woke up this morning i don't know i've been like on and off sleeping i guess because i'm like excited about tomorrow i get to see you know uh, my better half but okay so let me tell you this topic right now i had been watching dar man's videos on instagram and facebook if you guys have not seen or heard this guy you guys need to go and watch his videos it's spelled d-h-a-r and then his last name is m-a-n-n and he is an in uh in uh inspirational or motivational speaker and he does videos to kind of show people the outskirts of life like the good and the bad and the ugly and how we can turn it around and make it something that it's it's supposed to be I've been watching him for a few years now he's really starting to get big uh, he's at 5.3 billion followers like that you know obviously people he's out here changing lives he's not just telling stories he's changing lives and he's helping other people change other people's lives so I want to just get into it it's not going to be a quick segment today but because I have some other things I have to do but I just wanted to say okay so this video that I was watching it came across me where this girl she was a teenager obviously and she slipped up and she got pregnant um well I put myself in that situation because I have three little girls And I also have two boys, but I'm more so aiming towards the girls right now. Um, Talk about the guys later because I'm still trying to get into the, you know, I'm, I'm a motherly raising girl, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if I said that right, but trying to raise my boys to be a man is going to be a little bit more difficult than I thought, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not a man and I don't want to raise them to be on a, on a feminine side. I want them to be masculine. So I'm still trying to learn that way around that as well. But I did want to say, I did want to put my myself in that predicament. I mean, that situation, because I have an 11 year old and she's about to be a teenager. You know, she's about to be going to high school. She's in middle school right now. So it's going to be tempting for her, especially the boys that already been there. Um, And also the girls that have been there in high school, when she finally goes to high school, it's going to be tempting her to like do different things. Oh, have you heard about this? Oh, have you done this? Oh, what about that? How about this? You know, so it's going to be different things that she's never heard about. She's we've never talked about. And I want to make sure that she's knowledgeable of these things before it ever comes across her path. So that way, if in case of this situation happens, she knows how to handle it. So, okay, the topic was, like I said, the girl, she's a teenager, she got pregnant and she was scared to tell her mom. Well, I'm trying to get my girls into talking to me about anything. I don't care what it is, sky's the limit. Talk to me about everything. If you have a question, come to me. I am your mother. I might be upset depending on what it is, but I'm telling you, it only lasts a few minutes. It's not going to last a whole entire, you know, I'm saying I'm not going to like just go ballistic because you told me this, you know? Okay. So she, uh, so her mother got upset because she was, she didn't even give her time to tell her that she was pregnant. The girl just, the girl just took a pregnancy test. She found out then two seconds later, her mom's knocking on the door telling her that that dinner is almost ready or something like that. And then uh, she's like, what's going on? And she was like, oh, nothing, mom. Cause she was already nervous. And she was like, my mom, she already had the mentality. Okay. My mom's going to kill me. My mom's going to kill me. I can't tell her, you know, this and this and this going on. So she already had that mentality that that was going to happen. So she didn't give time to give up the courage to kind of come to her mom willingly and tell her, Hey, this is the problem. This is what's going on. You know? So her mom was already, you know, uh, already jumping down her throat. She didn't even give her time, her daughter time to actually say, okay, mom, I have something I have to talk to you about, you know? Um, so uh, she ended up finding the pregnancy test and telling her, 
uh, you know, she was like, oh my God, you're pregnant. And then she was like, yes, I'm so sorry, mom. That's the, the, the thing that the girls are going to do. They're going to apologize. You know, they're going to be like, oh my God, I'm sorry. Because you didn't give them time to say anything. You didn't give them time to express yourself. You didn't give them time to build up enough courage to tell them, hey, this is what's going on, mom. I'm sorry. You know, yada, yada, yada. You just kind of jump the bandwagon, you know? Um, so I put myself in that predicament because the mom ends up get going ballistic and kicking the daughter out of her house. Okay. So, uh, I just feel like, first of all, I wouldn't have did that. I wouldn't have never kicked my kid out of her kid because she said, well, she gave her an ultimatum. She said that if you, you either, you either abort this child or, um, or, you know, we're going to, we're going to either go to the clinic the tomorrow morning, or you're going to have to get the, get the crap out of my house. And she was like, mom, I would never abort my baby. And see, that's the where, that's where I have a cross play at this. Um, because I, um, I am an anti-abortionist. I do not, I do not believe in abortions. I don't, I think that every kid deserves a life. I think that I am very pro-life. Um, so And I guess that's why I have so many kids because I just like, you can't blame your mistakes on the kids. You cannot because like being in my situation, my background, the way I was raised, and then also me coming up, how my mom did me and how my mom, you know, I I was born and how I was created. I found out all of that. That right there changed my life on how I viewed pregnancy and how I viewed being a mother and how I viewed um, abortions and how I viewed, um, you know, just every, every kid has a life because it goes back to that because, um, I actually was not, um, planned. I was not a planned pregnancy. Um, my mom just kind of like, you know, was like, Hey, she betted somebody, um, uh, betted somebody's husband that she can have sex with their man and ended up winning that bet because she had sex with their man. And then I was created. And then, you know what I'm saying? My mom was on acid and drugs and just drinking and partying and everything like that. And really didn't give a crap about me. So, and then, you know, in that situation, she did not abort me. She kind of just left me wherever and just kept going, doing whatever she was doing. And so, um, she, so that plays into a lot of, okay, what do I want to do in this situation? What do I want to tell my daughters? What what do I, you know, what do I want to do for them? And I just feel like if I put that, first of all, I will never kick my kid out of, out of the, out of the house. I don't care how mad I am. I'll never kick her out of the house, never kick them out of the house because, you know, for the, for the simple fact is that I'm their mother and I am not perfect and I can't judge them because, you know, if, I want to stop it. I want to get it to where she can come to me and ask me before it gets to that point, mom, okay, this boy, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Brianna or whoever, Jazzy, whoever, um, let's do it like this. Okay. Let's, let's not pay attention to this boy. Let's do it like this. You know what I'm saying? So my whole thing would be, um, of course I'm trying to instill in my girls that it would be, um, education. And this is how I, I plan to, you know, really push their, uh, push their, uh, their lives, you know, in this order. I, I want to, them to be, um, successful first. Well, I want them to have an education first, and then I want them to, um, uh, start a career. Um, my daughter wants to be, one of my daughters wants to be a basketball player. So I'm like, okay, you know, you want to be a basketball player and stuff like that. So we're going to get your education up there. And then after that, we're going to work on, we're going to send you to basketball camp. And then after that, we're going to, um, we're going to, you know, we're going to keep on pushing. We're going to keep on moving through. So like I said, I want my girls to have education first. Okay. Finish school, have a career then I want them to find that special person that, that fits their everyday lifestyle. That's not just going to use them for their money or for their, you know, for their, 
uh, knowledge or just waste their time and just really ruin their career. I don't want that to happen. I want them to be, like I said, successful and then find that right person that fits their needs, that, that is compatible with them and goes with, you know, they have a good head on their shoulders. They have an education. They have a good job. They're going, they have goals. They have morals, you know, and all of that stuff. I want them to be, a, be match their compatibility. You know what I'm saying? And then, uh, sorry guys, I'm getting in the car. Um, so yeah, I want them to match their compatibility. And then on top of that, after they find that right person, I want them to get married. I want them then to worry about settling down. Don't, don't, you know, don't do like with me, I was 16 and I was pregnant. And actually, if I would have never uh, went down back down to where um, my my biological mom lived, I wouldn't have never had kids. And I'm not saying I regret having kids. I kind of do, but I don't because I love my kids and I wouldn't change it for the world having the kids because they've taught me so much and I'm still, you know, they're, they're still doing, you know, like they're teaching me a lot of stuff and they're, they've stopped me doing a lot of stuff that I would have probably done if had I would have stayed back in South Carolina and, and been going down the bad road that I was going down, trying to stay, trying to build that relationship with my biological mom. Whenever I moved down here, yeah, I was, I, 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 in Texas, I just, you know, I felt some type of way. I tried to start all over, try to get myself back to where I was before I left. And I just couldn't do that mentally. I couldn't do that. So I want my girls to have the best. I want my boys to have the best, you know? I want them to 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 learn, you know, learn the good and before it gets bad, you know what I'm saying? And so I want them to be able to first come to me and talk to me because I want them to be able to be like, okay, mom, this boy, he's been trying to talk up underneath my clothes. He's been really trying to get me to, to, to do some stuff with him. And I'm not sure if I should do this. And, you know, I don't, what, if I try to do this, what, what, what will happen? Talk to me about that. Yeah, we get uncomfortable sometimes as parents, you know, the guys come uh, or <clears throat> the guys come, the boys come to us, especially us being, um, moms, we're like, okay, oh, we, instead, especially if we can't say, go tell dad or go ask your dad, when if we are mom and dad, we have to kind of like put our uh aside and just talk to that person because we want our kids to be open with us and honest with us and, and tell us what's on their mind. And, and so that way we can stop all of that. You know what I'm saying? Stop all of that before it gets to the, the it gets worse. So, um, I know I remember I caught my son doing something and I was just like, whoa, like, oh my God, you know, and, and, and I had to sit, I had to come back and, and talk to him and sit down and was like, Hey, it's okay to do. Once I called his dad, <laughs> I got some closure with that. Cause I was like, whoa, um, once I got some closure with that, I kind of came back as mom and sat down and talked to him about, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is not what we're, this is what we're not going to do. And he had a better understanding. But with my girls, I do want them to come to me and talk to me about as feminine stuff. We have us, us as females, we have a lot of stuff going on and we have more stuff that can go wrong and can go on. And it's just like boys, they don't have it easy, but they have it easier than, than girls, of course. Um, but be, going back to the Dar vi video, um, you know, the, the girl, the mom ended up kicking out the girl, kicking the girl out of the house. Okay. After she found out that she was pregnant and she went to go to her mom and she was like, what happened to Patrice? And she, uh, the grand, uh, the mom was like, well, she found, she found out, we found out she was pregnant and she, I kicked her out of the house and she was like, why would you do that? The grandmother was like, why did you do that? And she was like, because she like, she, this is not, she's not supposed to be doing this. You know what I'm saying? So, um, the mom was like, uh, the grandma was like, no, you don't kick her out. Like you don't, you don't do that. And, and, um, and the lady was like, I'm sorry. Okay. So the grandmother was like, you don't do that. And she was like, why are you telling me this? You've never been through this, something like this. And, and the grandmother was like, well, you see, 
and then Dar tends to when the, when the parents or when the person that's telling the story says you see they go back in time it's 50 years 10 years two months it doesn't matter and they tell why they said that and so basically the grandmother had the same thing happen to her her mom actually did kick her out she was pregnant living on the streets and she had her daughter and she did not abort her she had her daughter and she figured out a way to take care of the both of them and so when the when the mom came back after her mom told her about the story about having her she was like oh my god like I wouldn't have been here if you if you would have did that and so she was like I gotta go find my daughter now this is when I kind of got I kind of got into realization as to now because Dar made it so easy. He really did because he was like, basically, she just went outside, you know, and their daughter was sitting on the steps crying. Sometimes it doesn't happen that easy. Sometimes when we tell our kids to get out out of anger, we're upset with them. We don't want to talk to them. We tell them we don't care where they go, how they do it, whatever. And they leave. Sometimes they're not down the street. Sometimes they're not around the corner. Sometimes they're not on the stairs sitting down waiting for us to come and get them. Sometimes they're literally gone. Sometimes they are gone. And there's no, and there's no, I can find my kid in two seconds. Sometimes it's okay. It's been like a couple of days and I can't find my kid after I told them to get out. So when Dar did that, I was just like, well, that's a blessing that she could go down the street and, or go, you know, down the wherever and find her kid in like a minute, you know, because sometimes when we get upset as parents and we tell them, Hey, get out. I don't want to see you anymore. I don't care where you go. We say that out of anger, but we really don't mean it. But then the kids don't know that we don't mean it because we said it out of anger, which makes them angry and makes them sad and hurt because they don't believe that. Our, why would my parents say that to me? I thought they loved me. And so they end up, you know, either calling a friend and telling them to come get them or they're just walking to where they don't know where they're going. They're just walking. So I think that was a blessing to see that the mom could actually go down the street and see her daughter that's right there on the stairs crying. Um, but I, again, I would never kick my daughters out. I would never kick my sons out if that happened, if they were to get pregnant at a young age. Cause of course I got pregnant at a young age, so I can't judge them, but I would try to stop it before it got to that point. So I believe that keeping my kids busy would, would, Get the, you know, like stop that. But then also you can't really stop something that when they go to high school, they're going to, there's going to be kids that's already in high school. That's going to be talking up underneath their clothes. Oh, especially when the kid, when the girls start getting developed, because I remember whenever we were in fifth grade and, um, and I, I, I mean, I can remember when we was in fifth grade going into Lyles, um, all the way going into Lyles, um, like there was two guys that I still know them. I, I, we graduated together. They would always talk up underneath my clothes. Me being a kid, I didn't know, you know, if that's the right thing to do or whatever. Like whenever the classes were over with, they would end up like pushing me up against the wall and trying to fill on my on my boobs and and you know doing other stuff. And I'm like, okay, is this okay? Like you know, we're in fifth grade. We don't know. Um, and they're trying to like kiss up on me and stuff like that. And they're hot in the pants, little ass boys. So they're doing whatever they see their parents doing or doing whatever they see in music videos or doing whatever they hear is, you know, is done to other people or whatever like that. So they're doing that. Okay. And it's just a lust thing. Like it's, you're trying to try things out. You're a kid, you're a teenager, you're not, you know, you don't know what you're doing, but you're trying to do it to see if it's, if it's all what everybody talked about. And then once you find out it's all it, what everybody talked about, then you're like, okay, I got to do this more. You know what I'm saying? So I was very developed in fifth grade. I had boobs. I had butt. I had thighs. Um, I wasn't tall. I'm still the same, same, same height as I was in fifth grade, <laughs> sadly. But at the same time, you know, like, that's all they could see. They could all see, oh, Kiara's, uh, you know, developed more than the other girls in fifth grade. Wow. We got to hit up on her. We got to let see if we can feel on them and stuff like that. And there, there was some guy that I was really into that I liked that I thought liked me, but no, he just wanted to fill up on my stuff. So, um, it was just like, I never slept with him or anything like that because mom didn't play that. She was like, you know, she had to know she was the type of mom that, 
needed to know where I was going, who I was going with, how long I was going to go with. She needed to meet, meet their parents before I went. Like she did that type of stuff. So whenever I went to my mom's and my biological mom's, you know, when I went back to South Carolina, she didn't have that kind of stuff. She was like, oh, why are you, why are you coming in before dark? And why are you telling me who you're going with? And you know, and why you asked me to come and meet with their parents? And she kept asking me all the opposite shit. And I was just like, okay, because I'm used to this. This is what's going on. This is how I was raised. Why are you not doing it? She just kind of let me let a wild child go, let a locked in child go free. It's like having a bird in a cage for like months and they haven't been able to see any other bird. And then by the time you let them out, they're going crazy. They're just doing whatever because you said they can do whatever. And they're going wild. And that's exactly what I did. And that's how the kids came about and all of that such and stuff like that. It's more to that story. But I believe that that was a good thing for me to experience because now I can teach my kids not to do it. You know what I'm saying? Now I can teach my kids, hey, let's not do that. You know, and then if that situation comes about, I know how to somewhat handle it. Like for one, my, my daughter would never be out on the streets. I don't care if she is pregnant, whatever was going on. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if she telling me she lost her virginity. I, I don't, I really don't care she's never going to get kicked out. She's never going to get kicked out unless she's ready on her own, you know, and we get her a little apartment and she's, you know, got her money set up, uh, situated and she's ready to go. I will never in my life kick her out of the house. Um, I I will be upset that I'm a grandmother at a, at when she's at such a young age, but at the same time, there's ways around that. Like, like Greg told, like Greg told y'all in the last podcast that, you know, and he was talking about relationships between a husband and a wife and a boyfriend and girlfriend. But I think that this goes to as, you know, like as far as um, mother and daughter, son and daughter, son and son and daughter, son, mother and daughter relationships as well. Because at the same time, we have to talk out. We have to talk everything out. If you don't have communication in a relationship, whether it's family or it's, you know, spouse and and all that, then it won't work out. Because if my kids can't come to me with confidence, knowing that I might get mad, there's not a guarantee that I will not get mad. But I will at least sit down and hear them out and let them know that this, you know what I'm saying, that this is what's going on. So I just, I just want to let them know that I'm here to, to listen to them and, you know, and talk to them and hear them out. I might not agree with everything that they have, or I might not agree with everything that's going on, but I know that, and they will know that I love them and we'll work through whatever happens. You know what I'm saying? That's just like another situation with parents finding out that their kids are gay it's just, it's just another situation that you have to just sit down and talk to because like, honestly, in my opinion, I'm not going to not let my child because they're gay. I'm not going to, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to kick my child out because they decide to date a, a, date a woman instead of a man. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be upset that I probably won't be able to have grandkids once they're settled and married and, you know, other things. But I can't help that. Like, I can't, I can't, that's what they want. That's what they like. You know, I'm just going to try to get all the resources that I can to help them with what's going on. And that's trying to be the supportive mom that I've, I've been. You know, I, I, of course, I want my kids to come to me comfortably and, and tell me these things and talk to me and, you know, all of that. I want them to. So whenever I saw that video, just kind of, Ask, I kind of asked myself, what would I do in that situation? Like, would I make my daughter abort her kid? Would I take her to the clinic and force her to give options that she really doesn't want to, you know, do? And then on top of that, I think that if my daughter was scared to have the baby, I think that we would just go to an adoption agency and just, you know, talk to, talk to them about put in a baby up for adoption, but I would make it an in-home and in-family, like an in-relative kind of, uh, 
adoption so that the baby is still kept in the family. Now, I don't want nobody else taking care of my grandbaby. You know what I'm saying? If I have to adopt the baby, then I have to adopt the baby. But, um, and because I don't want that baby to stop my daughter from, from pursuing her career. I don't want that baby to stop my daughter from being successful because I'm the type of mom that's like, no, you had this baby, you did this, so now you're going to deal with it. I don't want to do that because it could have been in the heat of the moment where she felt like she was peer pressured to do something that she really didn't want to do. It could also be rape. It could also be a lot of different things. And I don't want her to feel like, okay, mom's going to punish me because I made one mistake and now I really can't pursue what I really want to pursue in life because I have to take care of my baby. Now, I'm not going to make the 100 Now, if we decide to keep the baby, I'm not going to make my responsibility 100% because it's, it's my grandchild. It's not my baby baby, but she is my baby. He is my baby. And it's my responsibility to make sure that they all are taken care of. So that being said, I wouldn't let her, I would teach her how to take care of the baby, of course, because it would be her brand new baby. She would not know what to do. And see, whenever I had my baby, and I was at a young age, I had postpartum depression like there was no other. I didn't want to touch my baby. I didn't want to be around him. And then on top of that, the nurse almost killed me. I just had a lot of stuff emotionally going on. And so my mom helped me with that. She helped me be that support system. And she, yeah, she really did it. She really did. And I'm thankful that she was there. Um, because I believe that if I would have stayed in South Carolina, I wouldn't have had that. I would have literally been taking care of my kid by myself with no help. And, and having postpartum depression and having a kid on you all the time and you cannot have that little break that you need to recuperate your emotions and get yourself together. Yeah, that, that wouldn't have did that wouldn't have did me any good. I would have been all over the place. Like I don't I don't know. So I'm thankful. I'm very blessed to have that support system because my mom didn't have to do that. And she did do that. And that was a blessing in itself. So that oh shit. I'm scooting all over the damn road. Um but yeah so that's what I wanted to talk about. Just put my, 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 my foot in the other shoe and see, you know, like what I would do in that situation. And of course, for one, I would never kick my daughter out. I don't care. I wouldn't be wanting to sit down and tell her my whole entire life story about what happened and how I can relate. But I would let her know that I, that's not the first thing that I would say was, okay, you get out of my house. Either you abort this baby or you get out of my house. Like, uh, what? Like, that's two negatives. Like, you know, what? I, I don't want my daughter to go missing. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be nervous and scared and, and, and worried because she's out there pregnant and no food, no place to sleep, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? And then it puts her in a worse position to get, to get like raped or to get killed or to get, you know, get robbed or to get, I don't know, you know, it's it's different things. And I don't want to put my daughter in that position. So that would be something that I would never say. I would never, I would never say that. I would never tell my daughter to, to get out or my son to get out because of one mistake that they did. Now, if it's drugs, that's another topic that we're going to talk about. That's if it's drugs that they're on, man, I can't, I can't tell you what I would do. I would try to get them help. Of course, because I'm not, I don't do drugs. I don't do drugs, never did drugs. And especially if it's like meth and crack and heroin and all of that stuff. Most of the time when people start doing that, it's because of peer pressure. Like somebody else is doing it and they're like, hey, you want to try it? And they're like, no, no, no. Oh, stop being a wuss. Come on. And you're like, you think you have to fit in, especially being a young age. You think you have to fit in. So then you're like, okay, 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 I'll try it. And then after you try it that one time, then you're hooked. That's scary. That's really, 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 really scary. And I just, I would be so emotionally torn up if my kids became hooked on drugs like that. Like that would be, or even having alcoholism. Like that's just, yeah, that would just be something that I would just be like, oh my God, like, you know, Lord, what am I supposed to do? Like, Lord, come on, talk to me, please, God. Like, you know, if I have never prayed to God, 
like like that like that I would be praying to God like that like that you know what I'm saying that would be something that I would pray to God like that like that and you guys will know what I mean when I say like that like that because some people don't pray well they pray whenever they just need something but I would be praying every single day there would not be one day that I did not pray about about um about my kids especially if they were on drugs or they're you know uh on uh, drinking alcohol all the time and all of that stuff I would be something that I would just be like yeah no I can't uh -uh. God I can't do this without you I need you in my life I've been need you in my life already but hey I need you even more so um but yeah that's the question today like what would you guys do as far as parents um as far as parents what would you guys do if you were put in that situation like the darman video where the daughter just found out she was pregnant she didn't get to tell her mom in time her mom bust in the door and found out she was pregnant and then kicked her out of the house would you give your daughter that option to either abort the child or get out or would you try to help her find a situation that works best for the family but also make sure she's she's okay of course you want to make sure she doesn't have any stds you want to make sure her health is okay you want to make sure that the baby is okay you just want to make sure all of these things are okay before you just be like you know what either you do this or get out and i know as parents we say a lot of stuff that out of anger we do i mean we're i'm I'm guilty of it i'm guilty of it i really am guilty as charged but um of course in that situation being that i can relate I would not put my daughter in the position where she now she feels like she really can't talk to me because I just blew up and I would just be like, oh my God, why didn't you come to me sooner? You know, so I I don't, I don't know. It just, it would be something, excuse me, because every kid, every kid is going to be, or every teenager or even a a young adult is going to be upset or going to be, you know, kind of worried and nervous to tell their parents that they're pregnant and or they're you know or even even if it's not even about pregnancy it could be about having an std you know i'm saying there was another video that i was watching that this girl she was having sex with a lot of guys being a teenager and she got an std and she didn't even know she just told her mom her mom was washing her laundry and she saw a whole bunch of discharge in her in her clothes and she was like what is all this and she was like how long have you been having this? And she's like, oh, I've been having it for a couple of months. And she's like, why you didn't tell me you had green stuff coming out of you every month? You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, they get nervous. They're scared. They're like, you know, so that could be another, you know, another thing as well. So, um, I don't know. It's just, it's just different things, but anyways, guys, that's the topic today. Just what would you put, what would you do? How would you put yourself in that situation? I feel like, um, you know, that's what I would do. Of course, I would love the grandbaby regardless, but I would never kick my daughter out and, 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 you know, make her feel like the worst person in the world. Because I mean, we all make mistakes. We're not perfect. We just have to learn from them. But I pray that I'm never into that situation where that happens. But I believe that, like, my daughter, especially my oldest daughter, she's not like that. Like, she's not into boys. She's not talking about yucky stuff. You don't see her doing, like, degrading stuff. Like, even with the TikTok videos, she bypasses a lot of that stuff. And she asked me a lot of questions already. So, um, and Greg was like, you know, having a mother-daughter relationship is great. And my daughter, like, she... We also had that friend relationship as well, but she knows, hey, okay, don't cross mom's path if I do this. Like, we're not friends. I'm your mother. You're my daughter, but you can come to me and talk to me like if I was your friend. You know what I'm saying? So that's the kind of relationship that we have and my other kids too. Um, and so, you know, I just, I just want to keep it like that because I feel like she'll be more open to tell me different things and ask me different questions about what's going on versus keeping it all a secret and then having me find out later. And then it might be too late if it's later. So, you know, but anyways, guys, that's the topic today. Thank you guys for joining me while I'm going to my massage MB. (laughs) Um, 
I will talk to you guys later. I hope you guys have a wonderful Saturday. I hope I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Um, thank you guys for listening again. And leave comments, of course. Subscribe on every platform that you guys are listening to. Um, thank you guys for all, from all around the world for listening to Scorpion Temple. I will see you guys later. Peace.